We're building a better world. We're building a better world. We're building a better world. One person at a time. And the world goes round and round. The world goes round and round and round. And the world goes round and round. The world goes round and round and round. This week, our daughter Zohar graduated from pre-K at BZBI along with her friend Yona Krasner Friedman and eight of their friends in a sweet ceremony on Zoom. In the midst of a pandemic and voices welling up for justice across this country, amidst thunder and lightning and tornadoes, with helicopters circling overhead, this group of children marked a milestone with parents and grandparents quelling and sending blessings in the chat box. The pre-K teacher, Marissa Richmond, prepared a video montage of each of the children singing a few lines of this song. One by one, they pledged, we're building a better world. We're building a world with love. We're building a world with peace. We're building a world with friends one person at a time. And as I watched them sing, I wept. Oy, eze olam, what a world this is that they are inheriting. After graduation, Zohar colored a sign for our window that says Black Lives Matter we put it up next to the rainbow sign with a thank you for essential workers, a picture of a mask reading, stay safe, a sign with the depiction of the coronavirus that says, bye bye yuckies, which is the prayer for healing that our children at BZBI sing. The world is hurting, the suffering is immense, and there is so much work to do. This week, I was particularly moved by the words of Dr. Donna Adams Pickett and Dr. Nicole Edwards, who are the founder and a member of a group of female physicians of color, the McStuffin Mommies, and they shared a statement in which they wrote, we remain committed to our oath to provide the best medical care possible to every patient that crosses our paths regardless of their station in life, their religious affiliation, their color. We do this while we look at our beautiful brown children with the crushing reality that this world will never afford them that same level of equanimity and grace. For eight minutes and 46 seconds we saw, but most of all we heard we heard 114 words, two that pierced our souls, two cries for mama. We heard our boys, we heard our girls. We heard in that moment that no matter how many lives we may save, there are so many others willing to take the lives we made. Make a promise to us, America. We made a promise to care for your children. Make a promise to us to do better by our children. Allow us to breathe. Make us a promise to do better by our children. To build a better world in memory of George Floyd and so many others who have died. Cries for justice are ringing out from sea to sea. And so many people are waking up for the first time to where we are and to who we want to be as a country. And as we make this promise to do better by our children, to do better 
by black and brown children. Today, on this Shabbat, we turn to Torah, our ever-expanding medicine chest of wisdom that the Jewish people have carried with us through the ages, through periods of crisis and trauma and transformation. We seek out remedies for racism and a map for the way forward. A number of times in our Torah, God asks Moses to take a census of the people of Israel, to take an accounting of who is there on the heels of plague, in the midst of an uncertain journey through the wilderness, as God prepares to bring the divine presence to dwell among the people. And the language used for the census, for counting the people, is Se'u et rosh, or naso et rosh, which means to lift up the head. Rashi says that God counts the people each and every hour on this perilous journey out of chiba, out of love, because each life matters greatly to God. Our Parsha Naso opens this morning in the middle of the story of the census of the Levites the tribe that is tasked with the sacred service of maintaining and transporting the Mishkan, the traveling sanctuary in the wilderness. And each group of the, each family of the Levites has different roles to play in order to do the work of all of Israel and to lift up the community as a whole. The Kahatim will handle the holiest of the vessels, the instruments of the Kodesh HaKodeshim, the ark, the table, the lampstand, the altars. The Gershonim will tend to the tabernacle tent, the coverings of skin, the entrance screen, the hangings of the enclosure. The Merarim will do the duty of carrying the planks of the tabernacle, its bars, posts, sockets, pegs, and cords. The Gershonim and Merarim will also serve as guards during the march from one encampment to the next. And the Torah says, Al pi Adonai pakadotam biyad Moshe, ish ish al avodato ve'al masao. Every individual was given responsibility for their particular service, for the burdens they would bear at the command of God through Moses. God and Moses, in their wisdom, recognize what work would be most fitting for each person, ish, ish, al avodato. The Gershonites, the Kohatites, the Merarites, they all take on different projects. They are all able to assume different levels of risk. They all have something different that only they can offer. For the vital communal project of creating and deconstructing and rebuilding the Mishkan on their path through the wilderness. And what is the Mishkan? It is a home for God on earth. The Mishkan is a space for God to dwell with us here on earth. It is the work of the Levites and the Israelites, and it is our work too, to make a home for God to dwell with us on this earth, to build a world that is fitting of God's presence. Our God, who cares for those who are most vulnerable, for the stranger, the widow, and the orphan. Our God, who hears the cries of those who moan under the yoke of oppression. Our God, who loves justice and desires loving kindness. Our God, who created each human being, B'Tselem Elohim, in the image of God. Our God, who wants to dwell with us here on earth. And it is on us to build a world where the truth is recognized that our black siblings are made in the image of God, that their lives matter infinitely, that each life, each soul is worthy of being lifted up. It is on us to build this world where God would want to come and be with us. Ish, ish al avodato, each person with his, her, their unique work to do to get us there. 
at the interfaith vigil on Thursday night that many of us witnessed and participated in, Abby Ham Stammelman Hockey, executive director of, of Interfaith Philadelphia, read a quote that Shonda Rhimes had shared. Abby said, uh, some are posting on social media, some are protesting in the streets, some are donating silently, some are educating themselves, some are having tough conversations with friends and family. A revolution has many lanes. Be kind to yourself and to others who are traveling in the same direction. Just keep your foot on the gas. Ish ish al avodato. We each have a part to play in our own way that taps into our strengths, that considers our struggles. And this week, I have been moved to see those who, who voted, those who were working to get out the vote. I was walking on Chestnut Street yesterday, and I saw, I met an artist named Samuel who was painting a mural on plywood over the dollar store that had just reopened as our state moved to yellow. And he was painting a mural that said, Daddy changed the world, the words of, of Gianna Floyd, the six-year-old daughter of George Floyd. And Samuel said, we are doing this all over the city. If anyone wants a mural, uh, talk to me. We want to paint these messages for justice over the plywood. We want to lift up some beauty, use art to call for transformation amidst this grief. And yesterday, our Muslim siblings gathered outside City Hall at the Octavius Caddo statue to do their Juma prayers and clergy of other faiths stood around them to say Jews and Christians and Muslims and people of all faiths, we are in this work together, we all have work to do. In our BZBI community, over the coming weeks, months, years, we are going to be listening and learning and thinking and talking and working together. We're going to be taking the lead from black siblings, black Jews and Jews of color, from black clergy and communities. We're going to be rooting ourselves in Torah and in our Jewish stories to move ourselves in the direction of an anti-racist future. We are going to be working together, each, each, each person as we are able, whether that is staying home to save lives or, or going out to save lives, doing all we can to choose life. We are going to work together to build a neighborhood and a city, a country and a world that is worthy of God's presence. We promise to do better, and we need each one of us. We're building a better world. We're building a better world. We're building a better world. One person at a time. And the world goes round and round. The world goes round and round and round. And the world goes round and round. The world goes round and round and round. We're building a world with love. We're building a world with love. We're building a world with love. One person at a time. And the world goes round and round. The world goes round and round and round. And the world goes round and round. The world goes round and round and round.
Rabbi Annie uh, Yishar Koach, and thank you for sharing those words of Torah with us. Um, and I, I think now the prayer for our country needs no further introduction than you've just given us.